thank you for the warm introduction i just want to share my uh, perspectives right uh, i'm someone with more than uh, two decades of experience uh, basically an engineering graduate uh, uh, from the 1997 batch uh, and uh, i have been uh, in multiple fields and technology is my passionate area uh, i have also written a book uh, rather multiple books uh, related to artificial intelligence uh, and also some management topics okay so this is my uh, a brief uh, introduction about myself uh, we will get into you know uh, the crux of uh, today's discussion right what are the key skill sets um, so the way uh, i have uh, uh, structured this session uh, is uh, i will talk for about 30 45 minutes and after that you know you can ask questions right so this particular uh, information that you are seeing on your screen uh, is the most important uh, information that i want to share okay uh, because this slide is about uh, the changes that are happening in our world that are happening around us okay uh, we are all in the midst of uh, the new industry revolution uh, the industry that you are talking about the industry 4.0 what we are referring to is basically uh, an industrial revolution okay industrial revolution is what you know we are all talking about okay these are all four types of industrial revolution that have uh, you know influenced us i think uh, mechanical engineering students will understand this much better than other disciplines right if you see mechanical engineering is the mother of all engineering disciplines right mechanical engineering is the core engineering discipline and mechanical engineering has been at the forefront of all three industry revolutions starting with industry 1.0 2.0 and 3.0 uh, mechanical engineering is what has driven uh, the three revolutions and for also mechanical engineering is playing an important part okay that is something i want to share you may ask uh, if you see this you know i am referring to this as end of 18th century right what did we have before end of 18th century you may ask right what did we have before end of 18th century is bullock cart right that is what we had before uh, 18th century and if you see uh, many part of the world uh, you know uh, took longer time right for us to move towards industrialization so what did we have in industry 1.0 we had uh, mechanization right we had steam power all those things defined uh, you know the industry 1.0 in 18th century right if you if, even if you take the example of india uh, the railways right uh, which which drove industry 1.0 has been around for a long time in fact we are we got benefited because of uh the transfer of knowledge from the industrial world okay because if you see the industrial world alone had that knowledge when i say industrial world i am talking of only you know uh, some of the western countries and uh, united states this is what drove the economy industry 1.0 primarily you know uh, locomotives uh, uh the railways because how will you transport you know uh, raw materials from one location to the other that is why i mentioned about bullock cart right before that there was no proper way to you know transport goods and then came you know mechanization and the next came industry 2.0 this is also something mechanical engineering students should understand okay about industry 2.0 if not 1.0 you must know about 2.0 the company that defined industry 2.0 was ford okay it is the company ford that defined industry 2.0 before industry 2.0 we did not have a structured way to produce a product in mass quantity okay we did not have assembly line i am sure you would have learnt about assembly line everything you know uh, in the course of your uh, curriculum right all that you know electrical energy became uh, because here it was steam power but here you know in industry 2.0 it was electric power right electrical engine started to appear but the bigger influence of 2.0 is assembly line 
right mass production of a particular product right what is so unique about mass production you may ask because it is an in industry 2.0 that we had you know uh, an 8 hour shift right before industry 2.0 workers were asked to come and work you know uh, whenever somebody wanted right so uh, it is an in industry 2.0 and especially ford and many other companies also but ford defines the industry 2.0 era right 8 hour shift and 3 shifts in a day all those things happen in industry 2.0 and five day week all those things you know what we see today what we take for granted right the origin for that is industry 2.0 and the company that drove is ford right no other company defines mechanical engineering industry as much as ford okay henry ford you know the introduction of some of the vehicles then came you know the computers right computers that you see industry 3.0 you know happened in 70s okay if you really see india missed this bus okay our contribution in one and two was very very limited we were not even there okay we got many of the technologies because britishers were ruling at that time okay come industry 3.0 india started to play an important role okay computers you know it came into all areas of our lives right and today uh, when i say today i am talking you know from last 10 years okay we have what is known as industry 4.0 which denotes industry revolution 4.0 what are we talking about here okay we are talking of one system talking to another system right that is a very very important uh, development that happened we are talking of internet of things what is internet of things your mobile phone is an internet of thing right machines are talking to each other through a technology known as sensors okay you in an assembly line one product is talking to another product right one machinery is talking to another machinery how is that happening it is happening through sensors okay the other important thing is artificial intelligence and machine learning okay the other important technology is augmented reality and virtual reality okay so what are all the skill sets that you have to learn right you have to learn you know machine learning because this is the foremost of all the technologies that are there in industry 4.0 okay this is a revolutionary technology that is sweeping the world okay and changing the way we are going to live and we are going to operate right so you are all part of industry 4.0 in another 25 years we will have 5.0 right so which are the companies uh, 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 you know that are going to succeed companies that are going to embrace this change right companies that are going to embrace this change are going to be successful right so you also need to embrace the change it is not only for uh, you know individuals so people who learnt computers in the 80s 90s 2000s right they grew faster in their careers so similarly people who are going to learn these technologies are going to grow faster and don't think that this is only for people with from a computer science background or a programming background no this can be learned even by non programming people like you and me right in fact if you see uh, my introduction i am basically a chemical engineering uh, graduate okay but i have branched off right i know programming but i see many people 
who are not from a programming background but they have become very successful right so today i am going to talk about uh, some of the auto ml uh, uh, aspects right so machine learning is for everyone that is the key point that i want to say okay so what is machine learning that you may ask it is part of a technology known as artificial intelligence right so i will ask a simple question what is the uh, uh, movie that comes to your mind when somebody says ai right when somebody says ai what is the uh, movie that comes to your mind it could be any one of these movie right it could be any one of this movie in fact there is a steven spielberg uh, you know movie with the name artificial intelligence itself right and of course closer to home we have rav1 and we have uh, robo right endiran that is there right so the question that will come to your mind is is what we are seeing in movies really about artificial intelligence or is it something else okay is it is what we are seeing in movies you know artificial intelligence or is it something else okay that is what you know we are interested to know right because that is something that will come to your mind the thing is what you see in movies belong to what is known as strong ai right because here we are thinking of we are talking of computers that think at the level of human beings okay we are not there yet okay that is known as artificial general intelligence and artificial super intelligence where we are today is we are we are detecting useful patterns and then we are solving problem right so i detect pattern in this graph and then i solve the problem right um uh, uh can can anyone tell what are the patterns that you are seeing here can anyone tell what are the patterns that you are seeing here I mean, I don't think they are in a position to speak. Position to speak, right? Yeah, I, I realize. And the I realize. mic is in the mic is somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. So you know, the point I'm making is, so you know, uh, think of what are all the patterns, right? What are the patterns? You know, you can think of here, right? The patterns are, you know, it is progressively increasing, right? It is progressively increasing, and the peak values and the lowest value they happen in two different i mean in a in a particular month every calendar year right so this is a key pattern that we are trying to observe i will use this pattern for detecting or identifying the next set of values right if i have to forecast what will i do you see here it is increasing and it is coming down in fact if you see there is a dip also i have not drawn that something like that right so that is how we will detect pattern so we are all identifying patterns and solving problems right what else can be a pattern pattern is all around us in fact we are going to identify pattern in our data set it is this pattern recognition that we will deploy and we will solve the problem okay so this is known as vki we are currently operating at vki only okay all the uh, problems that we are solving it is all in the realm of uh, weak ai only okay 
we are trying to solve problems uh, through uh, through you know uh, VK, but don't think VK is really weak. It is only to distinguish between strong and weak. You know, we are calling the current one as V. So don't you know, industry 5.0 will be about strong AI. Right? The next generation will be studying about industry 5.0. Okay, we are already into well into industry 4.0 well into industry 4.0 we are not like starting 4.0 we are well and truly into 4.0 right so this is what you know we are all interested in we want to create a system where machines will behave like human beings we are far far away from that okay so we are currently at VKI where we are trying to solve problems by detecting patterns. Okay, this is the dominant mode of AI today. Okay, so what are all the different applications? You know, I'll first talk about uh, application in different industries, and then I will come to uh, you know the mechanical engineering industry. Okay, it is used in insurance. It is used to detect fraud. Okay, you can think how 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 is uh, fraud detected? Suppose, for example, uh, you are uh, uh, you are driving a, a two-wheeler. Okay. You are, I, I presume, you are all staying in a hostel. Okay. You are trying to take the vehicle out. While trying to take the vehicle out, you bang the vehicle, you know, against a wall. Okay, and the vehicle gets damaged. Now, whose fault is it? It is your fault. Can you claim insurance for that? No, you cannot claim, right? Because it is your fault. Nobody else was involved. You were trying to take the vehicle out. It banged against a wall and the vehicle got damaged. Nothing else happened. But you know what people will do? People will say that, Sir, I was driving on a road. Somebody banged the vehicle and they left. Okay. They may even cook a story saying, you know, I fell down, sir. So, this is clearly a case of fraud, right? Today, machine learning is used to identify such frauds. In fact, we are working in such kinds of frauds. Okay. In fact, we are working in such, uh, to identify such kinds of frauds. Right. So, we will identify fraud. Because obviously, the person uh, uh, who is, uh, uh, the person who is, uh, uh, asking the uh, who is logging a claim right that individual thinks that you know the company will not find the fraud but the company today is deploying artificial intelligence and machine learning in detecting fraud okay another key point that you know that can come to your mind sir that kind of thing may be happening abroad is it happening in india such a question can come to your mind the answer is yes it is very much happening in India. People are today using artificial intelligence and machine learning. The Indian companies are using to detect fraud and for so many other things. Right? So, I mentioned India is not, uh, did not play an important role in industry 1.0 and 2.0 and 3.0 we played only a limited role. But we are playing a very important role in industry 4.0. So, please keep that in mind. No doubts, US is leading the pack. Okay, US is the USA is the number one country that drove all the four revolutions. Okay, now no doubts about it. It is purely driven by USA and uh, some of the Western countries. But a country like India is playing an important role in Industry 4.0. We did not play. India did not play an important role in the first three industrial revolutions. And you are all going to play an important role in industry 4.0. Okay. So, please keep that in your mind. Okay. You are all going to play an important role. So, all the examples that I am talking about here are very much relevant, you know, uh, are used by companies in India. Right. It is used in retail uh, uh, scenario. Suppose you go to a shop. 
right let's say you buy a coke let's say you buy a coke what else are you going to buy what else are you going to buy you will probably buy a razor what else are you going to buy what else are you going to buy probably a shaving cream what else are you going to buy you know you are all staying in hostel right probably a maggi you you do not like the hostel food so what someone is going to buy is being predicted using machine learning right and similarly face detection we are using face detection technology a lot right today you know you can uh, log into your mobile phone using face detection it is used a lot you know in the area of healthcare you know especially diagnosis machine learning played an important role you know in uh, the development of covid vaccines okay in healthcare you know in diagnosis it is ml is playing a very very important role it is also playing a role in airlines right so all these things are applications of uh, machine learning in uh, different industries okay this is where you know machine learning is uh, sweeping the world okay now coming to mechanical engineering industry right i said mechanical engineering is the mother of all industries right any application you develop it must be relevant to the mechanical industry because if it is not relevant to the mechanical industry it cannot be scaled up right so mechanical because that is, it is mechanical industry that moves the world right so a new technology like machine learning it must be applicable the use case must be there in mechanical industry also okay so you, what is it that you are seeing in your screen this is a uh, a mechanical industry right uh we don't know whether it is a light engineering or a heavy engineering this is a cooling tower right you can see that right you can see the distance right this could be possibly you know two floors and how many floors are there 20 floors right this is equivalent to 20 floor building this is a cooling tower so and cooling tower is a critical equipment what is a critical equipment critical equipment is if this equipment fails the factory will not operate factory is here that is assembly line right this is also part of the factory but cooling tower is outside right outside the assembly line or it can be manufacturing something else also right it can be a process industry it can be a heavy engineering industry right so cooling tower if the critical equipment fails this will stop so a critical equipment cannot fail okay and another aspect of critical equipment is it will fail once in a blue moon right critical equipment will not fail every day whereas you run you know a lathe let's say it can fail you know every month right some or the other problem can happen but a critical equipment like cooling tower will not fail it will fail once in 2 years right but when it fails the impact is high are you getting what i am saying in prediction of low frequency high impact failures machine learning is used because this is a low frequency event it is not going to fail it will fail once in 2 years or even 3 years right so that a critical equipments uptime is enhanced right this is your asset because today what happens what is happening in industry is preventive maintenance what is preventive maintenance you leave your uh, two wheeler or car you know every uh, every year right you know uh, or once in 3 months or once in 6 months you leave the uh, vehicle you know to your mechanic a check what is going on you know check if the vehicle is running well whereas in predictive maintenance 
i predict when the equipment will fail right i come and tell you you know you are running a you know you are having a two wheeler right using predictive maintenance i will come and tell hey your machine is going to fail uh, 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 you know next month right and you are likely to have these kinds of failures that is predictive maintenance before failure happens i tell when the failure will happen and i also tell which part will fail right because in an in an equipment like this there can be thousands of parts no i come and tell which of the equipment will fail right and this can work independent because today what is happening we use statistical process control non destructive testing that is how people are predicting or you know identifying failures right i presume all of you know what is non destructive testing right i presume all of you know what is statistical process control probably final year students may know right more than third or second year students you all will study right second and third year you all will study about these topics so now ai is coming on top of that you have ndt right you have spc but we have ai ml that is coming on top of it and it is telling when something will fail right and note that this tool can be easily operated by anyone right we will give a simple interface you don't require any major skills right so whatever machine learning i deploy i give an interface so this is the application that runs in the background and the interface is there right i just upload the data and the system tells when the equipment is going to fail and this is especially useful for companies that don't have historical failure information or limited failure information or monitoring manually still there are many factories okay that operate equipments you know or monitor equipments on a manual basis they don't operate equipment manually but they may monitor equipment manually right so for all these scenarios ai ml you know is a wonderful uh, opportunity right so i said this is a becoming an important skill mechanical engineering students must learn machine learning so there are two tracks okay one is a programming track and the other is a non programming track this programming track programming track is where you learn to code okay here in a non programming track there is no code okay that is known as auto ml automation of machine learning this is known as automation of machine learning so just like automation is there in different industries automation is coming to machine learning also what is this automation in the it industry if you see about 25 years back when i started the industry right to develop an app like let's say ircdc 25 years back i will write possibly about 20000 lines of code in low code that has been there for the last uh, 10 years i will possibly write this with about 8000 lines of code now zero code no code means zero code that is i don't write any single line of code this no code is a big advantage for mechanical electrical right instrumentation chemical and other kinds of disciplines right because you don't need to learn programming in this crowd some of you may be interested in programming right 
Many of you may not be interested in program. So for such people, we can have, we can have the no code platform. Okay. We can have the no code platform. and teach machine learning. So someone like a mechanical engineering student can also learn machine learning. Right, please note that. It is not like mechanical engineering students or electrical engineering students or instrumentation students. They cannot learn, they cannot learn uh, machine learning. They can also learn machine learning using no code approach where you don't need to do any programming, right? That is the advantage, you know, with uh, this approach of machine learning, right? Plus there are a lot of applications because machine learning is becoming an important skill. This is an important skill for today's generation whether you are going to work in a shop floor whether you are going to work in an IT industry or let's say you, you, you say that a lot of people are starting their own company right tomorrow you can say that sir I will start a company like Swiggy or Zomato whatever you do machine learning is an important skill you cannot wish away this uh, thing okay in fact I encourage all of you to learn machine learning right so what are the skill sets you know what are the things i said you know uh, in the industry 4.0 machine learning is the most important right there are other skills like ar where i'll show a video okay the other is internet of things where equipments are talking to each other through sensors right but this machine learning, this is the most important of all skills. Okay. As practitioners, you must know. Right. So I'll quickly show a video of it. point I am trying to make is because this is where it is you know a, a large equipment we talked about it right how will you go inside the equipment previously what you used to do you know a critical equipment fails it used to take a lot of time right so can you see an equipment like this is now brought into a conference room is brought into a training room so if you have to you know a mechanical engineering students if you are going to you know get trained to operate a critical equipment like a cooling tower what will you do previously you know uh, people will show the uh, cooling tower you know from a distance and teach you today what is happening is through ar vr augmented reality and virtual reality you can actually see the three dimension right using what is known as a ar vr glass okay so this is known as a Polo lens, okay, this is from Microsoft and you can wear, there are, you know, different price points there and see this here, people are, you know, people are sitting in a conference room and they are discussing, right, this is a computer, all the measurements are going on and they tell, you know, this is an equipment, a large equipment, possibly, you know, uh, about, you know, uh, 50 feet equipment. And you discuss, you know, what is going on inside this equipment, where it is failing. All of you are sitting inside a conference room. You are not going inside. And what will you identify? You will identify that the fault is here. This particular place, there is a fault. So you have to replace this particular, you know, uh, sheet of metal. What you will order this sheet of metal. You will take the measurement from here. 
and then once it is ready the relevant person will go inside and replace what used to take many days today you know it is possible with machine learning and ar vr that you can identify faults proactively and you can fault localization is a very very easy step right so that is the beauty of this augmented reality you know bring your whole sculpture right you know the entire machine to your room just a click of a button this is where the world is moving right i i'm sure a day is not far off right in fact the technology is already there i am sitting you know in a conference room i will appear inside you know your uh, uh, hall or you know whatever place you know you are all sitting right i will appear in front of that my whole image right will appear how is that possible through ar vr i don't have to travel uh, to coimbatore right to your college that is where the technology is moving because i am able to bring this right i am able to bring this equipment inside a conference room you know in, inside i am placing it on a table just like how i am placing a flower vase right so day is not for a where i will be physically you know present somewhere else right i am in a different city but i will be right inside your college campus and talking about machine learning talking about ar vr so that is where you know this uh, how is this possible uh, through ar vr what is ar vr i am been talking it is virtual reality it's augmented reality right this equipment is brought in front of you in a three dimension machine learning will tell what is going to fail and when you use ar vr to analyze the failure right what are you going to do with the failure that is where different technologies are combining and we have the industry 4.0 that is sweeping our world right so this is where the industry is moving so we industry 4.0 you are all part of this right and machine learning and ai you know as i said as i emphasized this is the most important thing there are a lot of other technologies which you can learn but i will strongly encourage you and how will you learn you can learn through a no code approach you don't need to write any code it is zero code in fact this is meant for people like you okay who are from mechanical engineering disciplines right or mechanical or electrical or whatever right so that you know you all can learn and get benefit okay so with that i will uh, stop okay you have any questions if you have any questions please ask you know uh, i will try to answer Yeah. Before that, I think uh, if I could add something, Govin. Uh, since we are talking about no code, I just wanted to inform the students about the various tools which are available today in the industry. Uh, for example, uh, you know, we talk about Amazon, we talk about Google, we talk about uh, uh, Microsoft. They have come out with tools which will help you to write. Basically, uh, when you have any data, the without any code, it will able to do some prediction. Right, automatically. That that's what we call the auto ML. Uh, for example, you have got Amazon. There's something called Amazon Sage Maker. Uh, Google has something called the Vertex AI, uh, and similarly, Azure has got similar platforms. So these are the probably platforms which you as mechanical engineering students will be using, where you know everything is so automated that you just give them a data set and and tell them what sort of algorithm you want to uh, run, and it will automatically give you prediction. It will give you the uh accuracy of the model and so on so, so i mean that is where it is moving today and, and this is very important for all you guys because ai ml is the future today and you guys have to know it it's very very important so i thought let me put some uh, thoughts up uh, put highlight some of the tools which are available in the industry today. yes yes yeah thanks thank sir you. thanks thank yeah. no he mentioned about you know uh, google right uh, uh, uh what is ai Microsoft, the, they have what is known as Vertex. Vertex AI is there. 
then uh, Microsoft, you know, has got uh, Power BI. Uh, that has got plus there are few other things. Uh, then you have Amazon. Okay, Amazon uh, Web Service part of that SageMaker. Uh, these are all auto ML tools, right? You don't need to write uh, any code. Okay. Plus we have our own tools, right? We will bring it, you know, so that you are able to get uh, benefited out of it. Right. So, any questions? Any questions? Because the more questions you have, you know, we will be able to, you know, uh, clarify a few things as well. Students, if you have any questions, kindly come forward and ask. Feel free to ask uh, Feel free questions. To ask, uh, sir, uh, I thought to ask, how is data science connected to AI? Brilliant question, sir. Brilliant question. Uh, <clears throat> let me just, uh, just one minute. Huh? We'll open a new slide and cover it. So thank you for asking that question. This is a very important question, and there is a lot of confusion in the industry, right? Uh, especially among the academic community, you know, particularly. So we are talking of you know ML, right? If you see this, AI is a concept where we are trying to bring human intelligence into machines, but the core technology that is driving AI is ML. Okay. Now coming to you know uh, the professor's question, what is data science, right? If you really see, both, you know, what are we trying to do in ML, you know, and AI? We are trying to analyze data, right? We are trying to analyze data. This is a core thing. In data science also, we are analyzing data. In machine learning also, we are analyzing data, right? Because data analysis is a core thing. Because whenever there is a data, remember I talked about pattern recognition, right? I talked about pattern recognition. We are all trying to find detect patterns so that we can solve problems. This pattern recognition human beings have been doing for a long time. Okay. So data science and machine learning, they are nearly the same. That is the first point I want to make. Although people are using this interchangeably. Because in both the things we are trying to analyze data. However, in machine learning, I said nearly the same, right? In machine learning, there is so much focus on prediction. There is an additional focus on prediction. In data science, that focus on prediction is not there. Okay, so that is the key difference. So data science and machine learning are used interchangeably. In fact, AI and data science are used interchangeably, okay? The mother of all is analyzing data. If you see some of the algorithms we are using, okay. In fact, we use an algorithm known as logistic regression. This algorithm is nearly 80 years old. Okay. In fact, this is the most popular, most used algorithm. It is 80 years old. Right? It's been adopted. It's been improvised. Right? So, throughout history, right, again, that is of relevance to, you know, mechanical engineering students, right? The origin of operations research, <clears throat> the origin of statistical process control, the origin of, you know, uh, analyzing data, data analysis, right? Mechanical engineering has led the, uh, you know, this entire thing of data analysis. So, all these things have improvised over time and today we have machine learning. So, to summarize, machine learning and data science are nearly the same, right? In machine learning, there is a lot of focus on prediction, predicting the future, right? Because in the focus of data science is analysis. The focus of machine learning is prediction. The, the techniques, that, uh, the approaches that we use 
it overlaps between machine learning and data science. Sure, Thank Any you, sir, question? for the clarification. Students, yeah. do you have any other questions? Sir, I want to bring it to your kind notice. Uh, we are also joined okay. by uh, robotic fine, fine. students, sure, sir. sir. Sure. Any questions? Any questions? Ask questions. You know, students, you ask. please come forward to ask questions. Because future is you, right? The college has organized the program for you. Please come forward. You cannot bring your mic, bring the mic to your place. Please. Student, please come forward. Please come forward and ask the question because it is a wired one. This mic is wired one. I cannot bring it to your place. Please come forward. The mic is wired one. I cannot bring it to your place. Please come forward. Okay. Sir, it seems uh, no questions are in the future, in the near future. We will be in touch with sure, you sure. to ask questions so and get clarifications. I just want to add a couple of points, right? Uh, especially, you know, people uh, who are from a non-programming uh, background, right? So we can, uh, you know, this is a wonderful opportunity. Uh, uh, because a, a technology like machine learning uh, is not only the preserve of uh, students who come from a programming background right the auto ml that you are talking about right it is a technology that is sweeping the world and uh, making you know huge strides so uh, we want all of you to uh, uh, you know get benefited out of this uh, no code uh, approaches right any other questions you know uh, okay uh, Arun, Arun Arjit, you know, you want to add anything? Yeah, Govind, you, you want to uh, present something yes, 30 yes. hours that we want to propose yeah, yeah. to the, I'll the just... three or five days workshop. Yeah, See the uh, what uh, Mr. Arunjit is talking is you know uh, we offer this uh, uh, machine learning especially for uh, non-programming uh, students, right? Non-CS uh, students. Uh, we offer uh, you know a 30-hour uh, uh, workshop, right? Uh, where we cover uh, these topics, right? Where we cover the concepts. Uh, we cover case studies, uh, we cover uh, the algorithms that are used and, uh, you know, we will bring the data sets and there will be live implementation uh, by the uh, students. So these are the uh, four or five topics that we cover. It is a 30 hour workshop, right? Uh, you will get a, a comprehensive idea of uh, machine learning, right? You get to see different case studies. I shared one case study that too at a high level, right? Uh, you can implement it, you know, using uh, this particular, uh, uh, the, the non-programming uh, uh, approach, right? Where you will select the data and you will have the output in front of you. So this is the, this is what, you know, we are uh, proposing to the non-computer science students, right? And so that, you know, you get uh, benefited out of it. So this is where we cover different techniques, different machine learning techniques. Sure. Sir, thank you for operating the course, sir. We, we will be in touch with you, sir, in the near future. Now, there is an, another student from uh, robotics. He has a question to you, sir. Uh, good morning, sir. 
so actually i wanted to ask um, can you suggest some of the projects that can be done under ml i am a second year student so it would be amazing if you could suggest any project for second year you are a year. mechanical engineer from right? machine learning Uh, robotics no no robotics, robotics engineering, engineering. Uh, uh, robotics you know and mechanical the example that i shared right i'll go back again uh this itself you know is a uh, good area right Pre predictive maintenance developing an algorithm for predictive maintenance is a good machine learning project that you can do right and since you are from robotics you want to combine it with some automation you have a you have an equipment right uh, you have an equipment from which data can be collected in fact this is how it happens you know in real world okay so you have equipment and then a sensor is attached to that right this can be any equipment the data for the sensor is fed over cloud to a database okay this is all in cloud over a database and then the data is analyzed using machine learning approach this is an end to end you know an automation project you can do it because you are what are you doing you know in automation you are collecting data right and based on machine learning if you want you know if there is an output right you want to do some action to equipment right maybe you switch off the equipment or you increase the speed so what are the kind of data you can collect you can collect uh, temperature pressure you can collect speed you can uh, collect vibration it can be anything so this can be a good automation project this is an end to end project where you are using machine learning does it answer your question okay. uh yes sir thank you sir any other question i think especially you know the second year right you have a huge advantage you know you can start learning from now itself right you have another 3 years before you graduate right or 2 2 and a half years so use this opportunity to learn you know and master this wonderful subject right so that you improve your uh, employability thank you sir sure uh, we are going to end the session with a closing prayer by amulya of second robotics uh, before that i want to thank the resource persons from ebts organization tane maharashtra for the wonderful session